So, thank you for coming. This is Doug Alexander. Doug helped us get money to pay for these beautiful composters. So, these composters are going to go home with you today for $20. Um, we got a grant to pay for a quarter of it from uh, Doug's grant. And then the mayor and council were kind enough to come up with another quarter of the money so that we could get these down to $20 each, which is, to me, an absolutely fabulous thing. So uh, we're going to save money in garbage fees because we're not going to put all that stuff that we're going to now be able to compost into the trash. Doug comes to us from Chevrolet. He had to commute quite a ways. <laughs> and 15 whole minutes. 15 whole minutes. So with that, yeah. Well, and uh, it's good to see you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, this is modeled after the uh, Chevrolet composting program that I put together about three years ago. And the goal was to divert 25% of our food scrap waste from going to the landfill. And uh, the mayor and council were at first very skeptical that uh, that could be done. Uh, but they said, we'll give you a thousand bucks to start. And I got funding from other nonprofit groups in town and as well as a couple of businesses. Uh, eventually we put together a total amount of $16,000, which allowed us to buy 400 bins. And we now have uh, 400 of our 1,600 households are composting. Um, we estimate that each bin is composting about 500 pounds of food scrap waste. And we also want people to compost soil paper waste, uh, things like uh, paper towels, napkins, things like that. And uh, so basically for each household, we estimate that the town is saving about $15 a year, uh, 500 pounds, which is a quarter of a ton, and uh, the tipping fees are $59 a ton. So uh, after this was successful, we're saving about $6,000 a year uh, in Chevrolet. I just wanted to do this on a wider level. So we've had Berwyn Heights, who has implemented the program. Uh, Greenbelt Bowie are getting ready to. You're now in the program. And uh, how far you go, that's up to you, whether uh, you, know, we, you can get 20 or 25% of the town to compost. Uh, I think that's a reasonable goal. And so in some ways, you're going to be the ones going out to talk to people in the community. Uh, you're already gardeners. Uh, how many of you compost already? Mm, not too many. Uh, so anyway, you'll know a little more about composting, and uh, you'll be the ones who can talk to others in town. I'd say the, uh, the biggest thing in Chevrolet was word of mouth, uh, you know, just sharing with others, but also if you have a newsletter in town, uh, probably an email exchange, things like that you can share. And then as you become experts at it, uh, then you can share you know, what you're doing. So we'll start with the presentation. Oh, one other thing. What's the main reason why you should all be composting? What's the biggest benefit for you as residents? Better gardening? And, well, and I'll give you a hint. It has nothing to do with gardening or with, uh, and it has something to do with food. Could be. What, what, what are some of the benefits if you're composting, you're watching your food scraps going into the compost bin, what might that help you do? You'll eat more healthy. You'll eat more healthy. And the biggest thing is you'll actually save a lot of money. Uh, the uh, American Wasteland, the book, suggested that about the uh, average household wastes between $1,000 and $2,300 in food scrap waste. And so when you're monitoring the food that's going into the compost bin, you're seeing it every day, you know what you're buying, what you don't eat, uh, so you can get a sense of what you're wasting. And that's really one of the benefits to the residents and one of the reasons why people should participate. Now, of course, you're also gonna get great compost, and I estimate eh, you probably get $20 of good compost which will pay for your bin in the first year. Uh, so from that viewpoint too, you know, it's a modest investment to put $20 into a bin. Uh, how we've done this, we are buying, uh, I have two vendors that I have agreements with for low cost for bin, and uh, we can buy them by the pallet, and they're just a little over $40 a bin. And uh, we, uh, 
my nonprofit, I have my own nonprofit unrelated to composting that raises some money, and then I do the uh, backyard composting as a nonprofit in, within that, and uh, have been giving grants of 25% of the cost of the compost bin, so 10 or $11 per bin. And then the towns pay that, and then you guys are paying $20 per bin. So that's how that's all working. Um, so the things you want to compost, of course you want to compost food scraps. Most people don't think about soil paper waste, uh, but that's a really large component of what's going in the landfill. Second, maybe after food scraps. So soil paper is uh, paper towels, napkins, tissue. Uh, well, to keep one on. But again, a lot of times people don't, they think of their food scraps and some of the yard waste, but they don't think of soil paper. And uh, in order for, well, I guess we'll get to it in a minute, but you want soil paper in because it has more carbon and it'll mix with the food scraps. It'll absorb some of the moisture. So there's dual reasons. We want to get out, the, out of the uh, food stream but waste stream, but we also want to have it with the uh, food scraps. And of course, some yard waste. Uh, I don't know if you have yard waste pickup here. We, we do. Okay. But uh, some portion of that can also go in there, and then that'll just uh, give you a larger quantity of compost. Uh, we're doing aer aerobic composting, meaning you need air uh, coming through the compost bin. That's why we have uh, slots within the bin, so no matter how high it, go, how high it goes, uh, the air can come through and keep it aerated. You also want water. Uh, water is important to composting. You want like a wrung out sponge. And uh, the food, we just talked about the compostable items of the food. And then temperature, we're actually not gonna be doing hot composting. Are people familiar with the difference between cold and hot composting? Probably not. No. No. Okay. When you're composting in a bin, you're adding a little bit at a time. So it gets a little bit warm maybe at times, but it doesn't really heat up. Uh, hot, comp hot composting is when you have a large volume, like a cubic yard or a big pile. You mix in a lot of materials at the same time, and it gets very warm, maybe 140 degrees or so. If, if everybody remembers when we went to Eco City Farms, that was hot. Yes. That was remember hot. that was hot? Yeah, and you've seen their pile. It's you know, <laughs> Big. five feet high, 20 feet long. That will give you hot composting. But this will be cold composting. It does take longer, but you will get a really good compost and you'll also have worms in it, you'll have lots of uh, bacteria and good things for your garden. And basically by managing, making sure you have air, making sure you have water, uh, and a good mixture of, and we'll go into greens and browns in a minute, and a good mixture of materials, then it'll compost uh, pretty well. Um, Food scraps make up, I think now about 22% of the municipal waste. Don't know what it is for Colmar Manor or Chevrolet, but it's a very large portion of waste that's going into the landfills. And uh, I use an estimate of about, as I mentioned earlier, 500 pounds of waste is what I expect will go into your compost bin. That sounds like a lot, but when you're done, you'll only have maybe this much depth. It'll be maybe 50 to 100 pounds of compost. Uh, we're doing this for a few other reasons. Uh, of course, we, are, we know in uh, Prince George's County, our landfill is filled rapidly. They think we might have another five years at most, but if more of us compost, uh, we'll have a better chance of extending the life of the landfill. We also know that uh, food scraps going into the landfill uh, produce methane. And although our, our uh, landfill does pull some of the methane, there's still some that goes into the atmosphere. We know that that's uh, a very potent greenhouse gas. So the more we're composting, we're, not, uh, we're reducing methane going into the atmosphere. Um, 
what do you need to make compost? Uh, the decomposer is basically bacteria, fungi, I'm not even sure how to say the next one, uh, mold, and of course my favorite are worms. How many people like worms? Everyone should love worms because they, not only do they do a great job of composting and you get lots of worm poop uh, that, that goes into your garden, but when you move your compost, the worms will go with it, they'll go in your garden, they'll do a great job of... Uh, Where do you get the worms? Honestly, you'll almost always find worms will come up in your compost. Uh, yeah, there's worms kind of everywhere. And uh, of course, when I'm out like on a rainy day in the spring, you start seeing worms coming up. I love to just collect them and put them into the bin. And when, when you look at my bin, I have literally hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, worms in my bin. So as you go over time, they multiply. And so I'll take some of them into my garden, leave some there. And again, they eat through everything, and they just do a really good job of composting and then a great job in your garden after. Uh, I already mentioned the things that we're composting. And again, the right amount of air, uh, moisture, like a rung out sponge. And there are occasions, like in the summertime, when it's really warm, uh, you need to add water to your compost bin. Uh, if you end up uh, I and mean, this isn't in the slide, but if you end up putting a bunch of leaves in, I would recommend that you pour uh, miracle Grow or some kind of nitrogen uh, into the bin because the leaves are very high carbon and they need more nitrogen in order to compost. So occasionally if you have to add water, you may also add a little bit of uh, uh, miracle Grow or some other nitrogen. I also use compost starter to start the spring. If anybody wants to share my bag of it, it doesn't take very much just to get started. If I've got stuff from the fall that didn't completely compost, when I start up again once it gets warm, I'll, I'll put that in. Yeah. And really, once you get your compost going, uh, it'll just keep going. So you'll take some of it, you'll leave some down the bottom. That'll have all the bacteria and other uh, rotifiers in there that. Uh, will continue the process if you add more materials. Uh, we just mentioned a little bit here where the decomposers come from. They're natural in the soil. Almost all soil has tons and tons of bacteria and other, uh, <laughs> uh, tons of bacteria and other uh, things that help fungi. So basically the soil, but if you, if you grab some leaves from the corner of your yard that have been sitting there a while, throw them in, they're gonna have a lot of bacteria as well. Uh, there are activators. I don't honestly recommend them. I mean, they're fine, but the natural things, things that are natural to your yard are already there. They're already decomposing your yard. Uh, and as long as you just pull in a few things, some soil, uh, some leaves and other things, I think you'll be fine and you'll save money. <laughs> you won't have to use an activator. And as I was just mentioning, uh, a teaspoon of soil, it's hard to imagine 100 million bacteria, 800 feet of fungi, uh, you know, just thin little strands, and uh, those are some of the things that are great for your plants. Uh, they allow the nutrients to go into your plants more, more easily more, uh, and over a longer period of time. Um, there is technically an ideal ratio of carbon to nitrogen for decomposers to work. I don't usually worry about it much, that much for backyard composting because no matter what you do, uh, the things will compost, everything composts over time, and uh, so you don't need to worry about it too much, but it's good to know so that you can think about the balance. and. Uh, you basically have a 25 to 30 part carbon to one part nitrogen. And the issues you have, grounds are things like uh, leaves are probably the biggest grounds that you put in, the soil paper. They all have ratios from 80 to 200 parts of carbon to one part of nitrogen. 
so they're very high carbon and they don't decompose very easily. Then you have food scraps, which are greens, uh, coffee grounds, um, things like that. Uh, those have a lower ratio. They have from maybe 10 parts carbon to 30 parts carbon. And so when you're mixing them together, that's why if you have food scraps and you have soil paper waste, when you're mixing that together, you're pretty likely to get a good ratio. If you feel like you have too many food scraps, you can just add some uh, leaves. Uh, yeah, I like to ground them up with a lawnmower because that way they'll compost a little more quickly. Throw them in, mix them in, and that'll both aerate as well as give you more uh, carbon to match off with the food scraps. And again, you don't have to worry about too much. People can get OCD about their compost. I know a few of them. Uh, they want these perfect ratios and they want all this and that. But um, you don't need to worry about it too much. It really will compost. It, it could take a little longer, but we're not really in a hurry when we're doing this. We're trying to just uh, take the food scraps, take everything out of, the, out of the waste stream, save the town money, make some decent compost for us, and that can be done without worrying about it too much. Just put the things in, they'll all compost. Um, here's just a few more, just showing some of the browns and greens. Uh, I've already mentioned the paper products, leaves, branches, mostly small branches, big branches will take a while. If you have big branches in your yard, you can start your own pile with that. Just uh, make a separate pile in the corner of the yard with branches big things that you wouldn't put in the compost bin. They'll take longer, maybe two years or more to compost, but they make a really great compost uh, when you're done. Uh, Eggshells, nutshells, anything that's organic, you can put in there. I've even experimented with, I had a pair of cotton shorts that had kind of worn out. I chopped them up into pieces and threw it in to see if they would compost. It took about two years, but uh, you know, anything, your hair, your pet hair, anything like that can be composted. About and they boxes. all have different ingredients, huh? How about like your boxes? Cardboard uh, boxes? Actually, you can put in yeah. cardboard boxes. The right. soil paper food boxes, like a pizza box, if it has a lot of oil on it, you wouldn't put in the recycling bin. Those could be torn up. A Chinese food box, you know, uh, or if you find that you're, and we'll get into this a little later, if your bin is too wet, then the cardboard is great to put in because it'll absorb some of the moisture. It'll uh, allow it to be more aerated, and uh, so that's a good thing to do. And sometimes if it's too wet, you can pour off that tea and spread it around. Yeah, you can do and that then too. And add some more paper to it, and then it will absorb it. Yeah, and we'll get into why you don't want it too wet in a couple more slides. But one of the main reasons is it will get stinky, and then you'll be not a good neighbor, and people will get mad at you, and. <laughs> and that won't be good. <laughs> so, uh, so, and by the way, if you do have questions, just ask them any time. That's fine. Uh, and then on the greens, again, uh, you know, all the kitchen scraps, garden trimmings, weeds you want to be careful with because if they have seeds on them, uh, you don't want the seeds to then go in your garden. So if you're getting them early before they're seeding, that's fine. But if they're seeds, they should just go in the trash probably. Um, and I mentioned manure here. If you want to make a more robust compost, compost is considered a soil amendment, not a fertilizer. Although it does have fertilizing qualities, it's not as high nitrogen as you would put in a, a fertilizer. So if you want to make it a better fertilizer, you can put in manure, bone meal, you know, other ingredients. Uh, that will compost with the other materials and you'll have a higher quality compost. So, uh, you know, for you gardeners who want that perfect, perfect garden, uh, that's one of the things you can do. I see you say used potting soil. Where would we get used potting soil? Well, for me, you know, when I've grown uh, seeds inside this time of year and I transplant, there's often some leftovers. It's more of what you have left over around the house. A plant dies, none of your plants die, right? <laughs> but if there's an inadvertent death, that plant, yes, that's there soil. You go, an inadvertent death. 
Uh, you repot your pot. That happens to me regularly that I find soil, I have a pot, soil. I grew something in right. and then whatever, and there's some soil, you can just throw that in and just mix it in. Sometimes vermiculite and all that. You can add some of those things even. Uh, and then, of course, you can use your compost in making potting soil on your own by adding it with vermiculite and other soil, a, a combination of things. And compost should be maybe a maximum of a third of that or less. Uh, things to avoid. Technically, you can compost meat and fish, but if you do it at home, it's going to make odor, and it's also going to draw uh, rats, raccoons, whatever may be around. So that's why we don't put in meat, dairy, oils, things like that, because it it's more likely to produce odors and draw pests. And on a residential level, our town really doesn't want that. I only have one instance where someone called me about odor in Chevrolet, and it wasn't like heavy odor that was spreading all around the neighborhood. It was just like when they opened that they noticed a little odor, and that's from having too much water. It's it's now anaerobic, and so this simple solution to odor is you just turn the pile, uh, you can mix in some browns to absorb the moisture, and that almost immediately gets rid of the odor. Um, as I mentioned, weeds, you don't want to have weeds that have seeds or anything that will uh, continue on. And of course, no inorganic matter. That's just kind of common sense, but uh, uh, no plastics, metals, chemicals, etc. anything that isn't organic. Uh, no cat, dog, people, other waste. Manure from cows, horses, things that only eat vegetables, that's fine. But anything that eats meats, potentially have uh, pathogen issues, so you don't put anything like that. Uh, disease plants, you know, if you have some in the garden that's turning yellow and wilting, you may not want to put that in because you may just be sharing that disease with your compost and will go, go further. Um, things that some people think about adding because they think of them as nutrients or good for your soil but are not good for compost. Uh, lime, maybe small amounts of wood ash, but just a minimal amount. Um, this time that I mentioned earlier that I cut up my leaves and make them smaller pieces because they compost faster. And you can do that. You were mentioning the cardboard. Yeah, you do want to you know break that up into pieces, um, and you can just use a lawnmower again with twigs and. Uh, uh, grass, but it just helps it compost a little more quickly. And the downside to it is uh, you get less aeration, and uh, which may decrease the airflow. So you're always balancing things, and uh, there's pros and cons. And you're talking a little about aerobic composting. Uh, <coughs> the fastest way is when you have hot composting. But again, we're doing it slow composting. We're producing a high quality compost, but it just takes longer. Uh, if you want it to go faster, if you turn it more often, which brings in more oxygen and, and also mixes all the materials, it'll compost faster. There's some people who are insane composters. They turn it every week. You know, when they take their stuff out, they, they turn it. I don't really recommend that. I mean, you don't need to be over the top. I turn mine maybe every two to three months. Uh, my goal is that the stuff I'm composting now will be ready in the fall. I'll put it in the soil in the fall. That gives me about nine months or something like that. Uh, so it's up to you. If you want it faster, turn it often. If, if you want to be low key, don't worry about it. It'll all compost. Turn it, you know, every few months. I think we talked a little about heat. And this is more just so you know, again, if you have, want to produce a large pile, let's say you want to do something in a community garden. Do you have a community garden here? We do. Yeah. yeah. You want to do something there. Or there's some people who don't like to deal with their waste. I mean, I found in Chevrolet that this woman came up and asked, are there bugs in it? Are there worms? And I said, well, yeah, and it's like, you know, just the thought of bugs and worms, you're like, 
she, she probably shouldn't come. No. So, so there are a significant number of people like that who just feel uncomfortable with natural things. Honestly, to me, that's one of the reasons we want to do compost, and we want people to connect more with the soil and with the earth, and uh, this is a way to do it. But there are some people who don't want to. So if you wanted to do something at your community garden, you could have residents bringing waste there and having leaf mulch from the town. You mix it together, you'll get a nice big pile. It will heat up like crazy. You have to turn it uh, every three days to a week. It'll compost in maybe as little as three weeks, maybe a month. It really it goes quickly. Uh, so it's just useful for you to know that for that purpose. Um, and if you're going to do it on that scale, you probably would want a thermometer because that's how you judge when to turn it. Uh, you'll get temperatures up to 140 degrees. You'll have steam coming off. And then when it goes to eh, maybe 120 or 100, then, that, then you know it's time to turn it and uh, mix it all together. And we already mentioned we're, we're going to have piles that aren't going to get hot. They might get a little heat, but they're not going to get to 100 and something degrees. They're just going to warm up and then they'll cool back down again. Uh, there are some benefits that with, with a high temperature, you can compost anything meat, it'll all just get kind of almost burned up in the, uh, in the heat, it'll kill uh, weeds uh, and things like that. So that's also useful to know. Um, again, you want air coming through. There are things you can do, it's the next slide, uh, even in your regular bin. If you have some kind of uh, tube or whatever that you want to put in that has little holes in it to, to add air to it. Again, if you're uh, going to be a OCD composter and you really want this fast, you can just put in things that help the air to go into it a little more. And you know, again, that's up to you. Or you can offer a service to go to people's houses and turn their compost. Hey, <laughs> make a living turning compost. Yay. <laughs> Uh, and uh, again, you want to, it's up to you how yeah, often you aerate the pile, but aerating will make it go more quickly. There are tools. Uh, what I do with mine, and I think this is the easiest way, is I lift the bin off, I move it to the side, and then I just take a fork, whatever you have, it could be a shovel, a pitchfork, a spade, and shovel it back into the bin. So that way you're mixing all the things back together. The top becomes the bottom and it gets exactly, all mixed Exactly, and they get all mixed together and, uh, and that will help. Can you say that again? Yes, well, I'll give funny. you an example. <laughs> okay. So basically, you, know, you have all the compost in here. It's up to here at this point. You're just picking it up, lifting it off, moving it to the side so that the compost is just sitting there. And then you're just going to shovel it back into the bin. Okay. So as you're doing that, you're mixing all the all the things back together. Uh, some of the stuff on top has not composted as much the bottom has, so that has more bacteria, more worms. So then you're mixing it all together and that'll make the compost more quickly. Uh, you can get a, a device like this. It's a compost turner. It kind of pushes in and then when you lift up, it spreads out and pulls up some of the stuff from the bottom. Uh, but I'm cheap. <laughs> I have a garden claw and I just put it in and turn it. Yeah, and you could possibly use a fork in the bin, but it's just, it, it, unless you have some small thing, it's not easy to do and you don't get all the bottom. So that's my recommendation. And it's the same thing when you want your finished compost. You lift it off, you move it to the side, you take the stuff on top that hasn't composted, you put that back into the bin, you leave the stuff on the bottom that's brown and crumbly, you let it sit there for two weeks to a month, let it finish its composting, and then you can put it into your garden. So, uh, and we talked about water already, but again, uh, there may be times, especially in the summer when it's 100 degrees, you may have to add a little water because no compost will go on. Uh, if it isn't moist. And similar in the winter, there isn't any composting going on right now. Uh, on a warmer day when it's actually in the 30s, if you have it in the sun, gets up in the 50s, you'll get some composting. 
but it's very weather dependent. So your bin's gonna fill up some in the winter. As soon as it gets warm, it goes down very rapidly. So, so Doug, before you touch on that, so you, you take this home. Yep. You find a place in the frozen ground where you want to put it. <laughs> or maybe move a little snow out the way, okay? Because you're excited, right? You came home with your composter, set it up, but you're still going to go out and feed it things, yes. right? You're going to take the stuff it out of your... your it's it's going to be frozen in there. Don't worry. If it's not composting, but it's also not in your house and it's not in your trash. So um, let me just take a moment. You can slowly drink your water and I'll pass this around so everybody will understand. All right, this is my kitchen composter. Now I, could have, now, I could have washed it out and shown it to you. It has an insert in it. I can either carry it out to the compost this way, or there's a plastic <coughs> bin in here that I could have carried. It has a charcoal filter in the top, which I think I last changed about six months ago. The reason this is important is it's got a week's worth of my compost in here. So I'm going to pass it around so you can smell it. Literally, it hasn't been emptied in a week. It does not smell bad. It smells remarkably like orange peels and coffee grounds, which is my general consumption. So, <laughs> and, uh, so it's not going to smell bad on your kitchen counter. It can sit there for a week in, you know, in the house. And I'm even more lazy than that. I have a, I have a thing like that. I, I, I happen to have a garage where you can do it with a five gallon bucket. But when it's cold like this, I don't want to go out to the compost bin, especially if there's snow in the ground. I don't want to go anywhere near that. So you know, I take my compost and thing like that. I actually use uh, the uh, uh, biodegradable bags, but I just I don't actually throw them in the compost bin because I find they take longer. I just dump it into a can I have in the garage. And again, you could do it outdoors if you use a five gallon uh, container with the top on it. But I find that's much easier. I put it aside and it's usually once a month, especially this time of year. In the, in the summer it's fine, but in the winter, it's maybe once a month on that one warm day we get where it's 60 degrees. Okay, then I'm gonna take my compost out. But otherwise it's gonna sit in the garage or sit in the, in the container and uh, and it'll go out later, and that's just plain easier and more pleasant than worrying about taking it out all the time. Now, what kind of container? Because you know, Carrie just said it's how first has a. Um, what did you, do you, you do? said a cookie jar. I use a cookie jar. jar. Well, okay, you, you can use anything. Mine looks. Mine okay. is a little bit bigger than this, and it looks like a baby trash can. Yeah, like if you can picture a uh, uh, aluminum trash can. Mm -hmm. It looks somewhat like that, only it's yeah, a little yeah. bit bigger than that. Okay. And then I don't like to, I'm also lazy because I don't like to clean my thing out. So that's why I use the plastic yeah. bags in there. And I use the plastic bag over and over for, well, until it starts looking like it's going to break through. It might be a month mm -hmm. or I trade off one and then another, you know, over time. But uh, again, I'm very cheap. So it saves me money. I don't have to clean the thing. You know, I'm very practical. I want to do it as easy and mess-free as possible. Can so, I, and how, can much I, is, and how much is these? It? These are thirty to forty dollars, depending on where you look for them online, with the filters Actually, can, in the top and all of that. And, but someone mentioned a cookie jar. I use a cookie jar. No, I just want to yeah. know. Yeah. I, want to I, I, oh, well, okay. uh, I recommend yeah. that you'll find something in your house yeah. that will they, work. You know, it's some kind of pot. You know. It, uh -huh. it doesn't matter, but it, it is important to have a lid yeah. because in the summertime uh, yeah. it becomes a real attractant for fruit flies. Yes. So you kind of want to. Um, yes. You know, when you're putting this in your time compost, of year is not an issue. It's not an issue, but you sort of want to go and get it in there real fast. Yeah. But I've even used just an old, um, a broken screen from the window, and an embroidery hoop, and just sort of you know. Over the top. Over the top, like yeah. you know what I mean, like uh, maybe a dish yeah. out of the embroidery hoop. And just stuck it on the top. Generally, the materials it's, it's don't anything. smell. No, it doesn't smell at all. Uh, in the summer, when it's a little warm in the house, if you had it a week, it might smell. But uh, generally, it, I haven't had any issue with it. It also depends what you put in. Some really wet, icky, mushy stuff sometimes starts fermenting. Actually, more than anything, it's like uh, you get a fermentation type odor. But most of you guys have air conditioned houses, right? So it, it doesn't it, it doesn't really matter. It, 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 the house is like a reasonable temperature. So uh, 
you've probably all seen compost, but uh, when your compost is done, it looks like uh, humus, like if you went in the woods, you dug up under the leaves, it should smell sweet. You know, if you go in the woods, if you've ever been in the woods and you dig it up, it actually smells really nice. It has just a pleasant odor, it's crumbly, that's what your compost uh, eventually ends up as, or with the ideal. <laughs> and uh, you want it dark and crumbly, you want it to smell good. If, if there's any odors or anything, you know it's not there. Uh, your pile will shrink. I had nine people living in my house at one point, and I have one bin. It never filled because it decomposes and dehydrates at such a rate. Uh, that it goes down almost quicker than you can put it in. If you're putting in yard waste, that might make it a little higher, but the stuff from your house, doesn't matter how many people in your house, it'll probably never fill the bin. Uh, some people like to have two. I have two because I have just let one sit while I'm filling the other one. But again, what I recommend before of lifting it off and pulling it over, you can do this with one bin and you don't need to spend more money. Uh, here's simple tests for your compost. Put it in a bag, uh, let it sit for a week. If it smells when it's done, you know it's not finished compost. It shouldn't have any odor, shouldn't have much moisture. Um, you can germinate seeds in it. Uh, some people grow plants in compost. I don't really recommend it alone. It can be done. It's probably better when you mix it with soil uh, and other ingredients, but uh, that's up to you too. You can experiment and see how it works. Uh, again, I mentioned put it in the sun. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I, I used to have mine in the shade uh, at one point because I didn't want my neighbors to see it. Then I moved to a different house in Chevrolet and I have it in a little corner where it's not visible. Just the sun heats, heats it and the warmer it is, the uh, decomposers work more effectively. So if you have a sunny spot, if you don't, it's still okay, it'll just take a little longer, it won't be a big deal. Um, you want, well, I don't know if you need water available, but, but you just need to know occasionally if it gets dry, you'll want to add some water, whether you carry it out from the house or whatever. Uh, drainage, eventually, right now you can't dig the soil. I like to dig down about at least a foot. Uh, one of the main reasons, because I want my worms to survive the winter. Uh, they can go down deep and then they can come back up. Uh, and uh, as well as all the microbes get down in the soil, so that's a permanent spot for my compost bin. If I even take everything, they're still down there and ready to go to work. Uh, and again, be a good neighbor. We don't want odors. You want to mitigate those by turning the pile. There's nothing worse for uh, the town to hear that there's an odor, and then they're going to call uh, call you guys and say, what the heck are you getting us into? Uh, you know, so be can nice. I, can I tell a story? Uh -huh. So our compost, the original compost, when we first took years ago, was like that. We had in the corner of the yard. And my next door neighbor came over and said, Roseanne, you, you have to stop the composting because all my eggshells and melon rinds were in his shed. So there was a whole underground network oh, of stuff wow. that was coming up and and, and they were saving them because they were delicious yes. and they wanted to eat them and in so the they ever like it was sort of like there was this little thing going on here. So we had to move it. But I thought it was hilarious. Oh my yeah. he hilarious. thought it was hilarious too but um but yeah he kept on finding all of our eggshells and our mm -hmm. melon rinds in his shed. And do keep an eye on your bin. We really haven't had uh, any issues. We have one raccoon that figured out how to open the door here. Oh, okay. That's which pretty I good because I, I knew that story and I put that on and I thought, really, a raccoon figured out how to open it? This actually has a little lock thing on. You can put something <laughs> through there to keep it from coming up. But, uh, For and we, had, we had two or three different kinds of bins, but one of this particular bin, they figured out how to open the door. A simple solution was turn the door towards a tree, a wall, whatever, then the raccoon can't get at it and that was the end of that problem. Um, I suppose things could come in underneath, and if you see any issues, the simple way is you just dig down a little ways. You can dig down maybe four inches if it's below the ground. 
it's probably going to keep out anything that uh, that wants to get in there. Is it chicken wire also? Yeah. You could do that too. Chicken wire would be fine. Again, I have not had any issues, but if you do, the chicken wire would be a perfect solution. Uh, so, so and it wouldn't stop you anything that from coming bag. through. The, the bag right there in front of you. That's what comes in it, and so it's got four screws so that yeah. you can screw it down if you think yeah. some critter's just lifting it up. I wouldn't try to screw it in today's frozen ground, but. <laughs> yeah, uh, but the other thing, again, I haven't heard of anything digging under. Maybe they occasionally, I don't know what it was that was digging, uh, digging under, but uh, if you see that, you just need to take a step to dig it down a little. If you need to do chicken wire, you could do that, but it has not been an issue for us so far. Haven't attracted deers either? Nothing no, deer, deer no, deer No, deer We have a bunch yeah, of deer near our yeah, house, and yeah. they don't, they'll want all your other gardening uh, stuff, your, uh, they'll eat your stuff. Uh, azaleas maybe, and some other things, but, but not your compost. And uh, we've made agreements with two different bins. The one you have is the uh, earth machine, the other one is called a, uh, it's from Enviro, Enviro World, which is a one piece bin. This is two pieces that piece together in the middle plus the top and the door. Uh, the other one is just one piece with the top and the door. Um, depending on how it goes, you can continue with one. We'll see how the pricing goes. Uh, that's usually the biggest issue because they're pretty much the same in size. And uh, again, we're cheap. Uh, and we also want to be thrifty for the town, partly why we want to get your name. It's really important to report to the town that who's doing it, where their money is going, that you're taking responsibility for their money and you're going to be uh, just responsible in that way and then they'll trust you to, to give you more money to continue the program. Uh, again, the odors that you may get, and they're almost always from it being too wet. Uh, you smell rotten eggs, uh, kind of a sulfur smell. Those things can occur. Ammonia odor, but they're all really the same issue. Anaerobic uh, conditions, too much water, turn the pile, add leaves uh, or cardboard or something like that, and that resolves it very, very quickly. And this really isn't important, but uh, for big piles, you'll have low temperature if, you're, if your pile is not uh, put together right, but I don't think we'll worry about that. We talked about pests. Uh, don't, again, don't put meat, fish, dairy, because that's what brings the pests. So the benefits of compost. Um, there are so many benefits to compost. Uh, you know, you're putting organic matter in the soil. All of you are gardeners, so you're aware of that. You have to have organic matter in order to grow pretty much anything. And around here, we have heavy clay soils, and they need to be amended before anything is really going to grow well on them. So uh, your compost is going to be that soil amendment. <coughs> you may, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you may add other things, but your compost is going to do a fantastic job. Uh, it uh, adds microorganisms because that's what's doing the work on the compost. So they're going in your garden as well as I mentioned the worms, who we love. Uh, it's going to increase the uh, amount of water, the soil, uh, water soil capacity. Um, if you add 50 pounds of compost to a small plot, 10 by 10, it'll hold about 100 gallons more of water. It's really astounding how much more water uh, it's going to hold when you put compost in. So this is also kind of a stormwater management uh, issue as well, because uh, you're not going to have runoff. You're going to have more water going to stay in it, in, in your garden. Um, so that's a value as well. It's going to help retain nutrients. Uh, just improve the overall soil quality, tilth, friability. Clay soil just sticks together. When you have compost in, you're going to, over time, get a, a soil that you know, will just crumble. It takes a little while if you're starting from fresh garden, but eventually it'll become a nice 
friable soil, uh, it'll drain better, uh, you'll be able to amend the clay soils, and uh, surprisingly it does suppress pathogens, particularly the, the fungi. Uh, they have a, an ability to keep down uh, some of the things that kill your plants, and so uh, it'll help, help make your plants more healthy, and although I said it's not a, a fertilizer, it will add some nitrogen, but because all those foods have uh, potassium, uh, you know, lots of different compounds in it, you'll get lots of trace elements which are valuable for your plants. Uh, you want to make sure your compost is mature, and that's why I mentioned before, pulling it off, taking the non-composted stuff off, letting it sit a while. You want it to be completely composted. Uh, through, if there's uh, things weighing still there, like browns in particular, you put them in your soil, it actually pulls the nitrogen from your soil in order to continue its composting. And you want that nitrogen for your plants, so you want to make sure the compost is completely done. Uh, you can dig it down 4 to 12 inches. I like my garden to be at least 12 inches deep. Some people go even deeper. Uh, depending on if it's uh, flowers or veggies. And I think I already mentioned water retention and breaking up clay soils. Uh, you can also use it as surface mulch. So, you know, different people are going to use it different ways. If you're really a gardener, you want it in your garden. But for many of the people in Chevrolet, this is their first time composting. They weren't necessarily gardeners. So, there need to be other ways to use it. Almost everyone has trees, bushes, whatever. So you can put them around your trees, uh, which will help some of the compounds go down into the soil over time. You can put them under your bushes of the mulch to uh, help retain water. So there's different ways that you can use it other than just in your garden, depending on what your goals are. Uh, lawn topping, uh, again, one of my recommendations, like with leaves, is to mow them into your yard. I have not raked leaves in years. Another lazy man uh, uh, issue, is, but I mow them in, and with the grass, they compost right in the soil. They add nutrients in, but you can do the same thing with the compost. You can put a thin layer on, rake it in, and again, it'll act as a mulch between the uh, grass leaves, as well as add uh, some small fertility, uh, and then the uh, potting mix have here half compost, but I think maybe a third compost is maybe more uh, realistic, you know, adding regular soil, uh, adding compost, adding vermiculite, adding any number of different compounds to make a really good potted <coughs> soil. And that is the end. Longer than I thought it was going to go. I thought it'd be about a minute per slide, but uh, we asked questions. I guess I have a big mouth. No. <laughs> so, are there more questions? Just what I know is wondering. Uh, on your paper place that coating that's on there. That would that be a bad product to put in? Because mostly you put. Yeah, it's a toss up coating. on that because if you tear them up, eventually they'll the composters will get in, but it is hard that coating. Uh, I actually have some compostable plates that I use at home, and then I can just throw them right in the uh, in the bin. So yeah, most if, people tend to stay away from those because your food soaks through before you you're not eating. Well, I, I, actually, there are some decent no, there's ones. there's some very now. good ones now. Yeah, yeah there are some um, decent ones now. I have decent compostable plates that uh, it doesn't soak through, and they they work fine. Then I just throw them in the bin. Um, the others, it's a toss-up. They, they will decay, but they'll take a while. You have to break them up. Yeah, yeah but break them Cos up Costco them. has a good um, compostable plates and bowls that don't be through. Yeah, I think that's where we got ours. So if you get the compostable knife, fork, spoon, hold in mind, those are compostable in a big, hot, industrial composter. They are not going to compost in I, your yard. I don't. Yeah, yeah, I and, don't do and so... If you're sort of tempted to go that way, don't go there. They're fine for eating. I mean, they don't yeah. fall apart now anymore, but they're not going to compost in your home composter this year. I mean, it's going to take a couple of years. You're just going to have to keep turning them back in. Um, 
And there is some discussion that uh, the state is going to ban styrofoam. Mm -hmm. okay. So if they do that and they go to the, the sort of cardboard takeout containers, mm -hmm. yeah. those will be, they're more like a brown cardboard. You can tear those up and that'll go in your compost because that's not coated. I, I know you probably mentioned this, but um, when we cut grass, we have a bag that the lawnmower collects. Do we, can we use some of that for composting? You can, and again, my recommendation, one of the reasons I didn't put grass on here, is that you really want to mow that into your lawn, because it becomes then like a mulch in your lawn, and the, the nitrogen from your grass goes back in your lawn, and that way you don't have to fertilize as much. Uh, fertilizer in the lawn is always an issue because you get run off and then that becomes an issue right here in the Anacostia. So it's much more ideal just to mow the grass in and, and not take it out. But if you do, yes, you can put in, but you want to put in with a, a significant right. amount of leaves because uh, grass is very high, much higher nitrogen uh, and you need something to offset it, so you want to put uh, equal or more amount of leaves in with the grass. Or we'll get a mulching way on your lawnmower. Yeah. That way when you cut it. And, and that's what I do. I, I mulch, and I mentioned again with the leaves, if you, you can even mow the leaves in. Some people want perfect lawns, and I have a neighbor nearby. His lawn is the most gorgeous lawn I've ever seen. You know, he pulls everything up, he fertilizes it, he has the company come out. And, <laughs> You know, if you're one of those, well, what can I say? But otherwise, the natural organic way, just mow the grass in, mow some of the leaves in. Uh, it's easier, it's good for your lawn, and you'll have, if not a perfect lawn, a very nice lawn. <laughs> Thank you. And one, one cheap, really cheap way to compost, it, won't, it takes away from your purchase. You can <laughs> dig like a, a low trench right along the yeah. wall of your fence put your, whatever it is, cover it. Yeah. Next week, put it in, cover it, and yeah. it makes, yeah. and it's already there, it's all the way around your, your yard, and it's around yeah. your shrubs, and you don't have to do anything and, else. And yeah. there are lots of different ways to compost. The main thing with this program is we're trying to get residents, many of them, because we have lots of gardeners in Chevrolet, but when you look at 400 people who are composting now, probably half or two thirds of them are not big gardeners. And those are the people we're trying to reach. You're the gardeners first, but beyond that we want to reach everyone else because we want to reduce uh, all this material going in the landfill. We want to save the town money. That can be put to other things, uh, you know, whether it's a playground, whatever. If you save a few thousand each year, you know, this is good for the town and it's good for you. So the people who don't know how to compost and don't, maybe won't feel comfortable digging into the ditch and putting it in, this is something that they can kind of picture, feel comfortable with, and those are the main people uh, that we want to reach, is uh, making everyone comfortable with the idea of composting and that it's easy to do and uh, that they can do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. And um, um, just like we heard, the, the, the composting could come to the garden, um, or it can be spread out amongst people's trees or whatever. But what we really want to do is, we're in a contract with the trash company right now, um, so we won't get a cost savings in this round. We renegotiate for July, starting July 1st for a new contract. We want to be able to say how many people we have actively composting so that when we go into our negotiations, we can explain that they're getting their tipping fees reduced, therefore we get the reduction. So this is all about us reducing our tax bill again and finding other ways to um, reduce our expenses. So I, I want to encourage you guys to go out, get your neighbors, friends. If we have to do this again, we're happy to do it again. Absolutely. So, thank and, you. and one of the reasons that we videotaped it is so we could put it on the town website so folks couldn't come out who felt it was cold today for some reason.
That's right. uh, <laughs> we'll be able to watch it, and we'll put the presentation there as well. Yeah. But there's sort of a pattern to this, because what we've done so far is last month we looked at recycling, mm -hmm. right? And our new recycling bins and putting more stuff in there. And now if we take the green matter and the vegetable matter and the coffee grounds out of the trash and we put them into the compost, we're just reducing that amount of trash step by step. That's right. Okay. And I just want to mention in the way of savings, <laughs> these, bins. these bins are guaranteed for 10 years, although they probably will last much longer, but I use a 10-year uh, estimate for the town. And basically, over 10 years, it should save $150 per bin. So there's, for the little bit that the town is investing, the $20 they're investing, they're going to save $150. And if you could get that kind of return in the stock market, we or take else, it out, right. yeah. you'd be a rich man. But you know, there's tremendous savings uh, for the town, which again, whether it's reducing taxes or using the money for something more productive than putting trash in the landfill, uh, this is a sensible thing to do. And we're going to be we're, we're on YouTube. There's a Town of Comer Manor YouTube channel, so please subscribe. And you can, you can subscribe whereby you get a message when we put something new on there. And we're going to try to do this. This is, ex, you know, this is the first time we're videotaping something like this. But that's what we want to try to do, to be able to reach as many people as possible. So you know, tell your neighbors to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Um, Thank you. And also, the Green Team is also looking for more members. Um, contact Carrie or myself if you want to join our Green Team. And if you're purchasing a compost today, please put all one of these small we just have to keep a record of it. And also, please make sure that you sign your signing sheet because we want to become a sustainable community and we have to keep record of what we're doing to be um, sustainable. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good job. Now, there are some composters up here right now. I think there are five of them up here.